Did you know that many jobs in today's society require a background in science? Some of these jobs include a biologist, chemist, and physicist. Or an astronomer, environmental scientist, or doctor. If you're interested in any of these job fields, you should consider adding a science elective to your schedule. Well, environmental science for Pennsylvania, as the course title is called, covers seven different units of study. And the seven different units of study are on the board right here. The biggest ones are things like Marcellus Shale, climate change, and Pennsylvania wildlife. So if you take uh, environmental science for Pennsylvania, those are gonna be three big units. Plus, we have pond and courtyard management where we actually go outside and we work uh, with tools to make sure that the pond and the courtyard look good. Well, any student who would want to have a career that would involve any aspect of environmental study or environmental outside work, this class is gonna benefit them. Obviously, Western Pennsylvania is home to Marcellus Shale, so if you have any kind of a career interest in that area, you need to know about it. Climate change affects everybody's life, and certainly we're surrounded by wildlife in the state of Pennsylvania, so that's beneficial too. This class sounds really interesting. I've always been interested in the environmental sciences, and I can't wait to see what this class is about. Yes, I would take environmental sciences because it seems as an extension of biology, but specifically for Pennsylvania. And it also gives you kind of what you would need to start a job because it focuses on management of certain things with biology. Hi, I'm Mr. Shriver. I teach AP Biology here at Avonworth. AP Biology is Advanced Placement Biology. It's a college level course in biology. It's for kids who want to go into some aspect of biology for their careers. If you take AP Biology, you will be prepared to enter the field of biology after you graduate from college. You have to have chemistry and biology as a high school prerequisite. And if you have those two and you love bio, take AP Biology. See you then. Hannah is a student in AP Biology. She would recommend this class to people interested in biology. It helps with the college admission process and it is worth college credits. In Anatomy and Physiology, we cover the systems of the human body. Uh, my students right now just finished up studying the muscular system of the human body. We'll move into the nervous system, we take a look at the digestive system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, so basically how the human body works. The elective is one credit. It is a full year class. Some students have signed up. I have a student right now this year who thought it was a half a year class. It is a full year class, so it is one credit. Anybody who has successfully passed biology is eligible to take the class. Tuisha is a student in anatomy physiology. She would recommend this class to people who like science. She enjoys learning about the physiology of the human body because it's interesting to learn about how the human body systems work. She enjoys rectangle table discussions where they discuss certain medical topics and drink hot chocolate. Of course, the astronomy is a half year uh, course, so it would be half of one credit. Um, it's available to sophomores through seniors um, you know, of, of next year's class and uh, it's available for any students, but particularly students that are interested in, in science. If they're curious about how the world works or how we know um, what we know about how the world, the universe as a whole works, then astronomy is probably a good course for them to take. Uh, it's organized into six units. Um, we start by looking at the sun, the moon, and the earth, and how we can tell from the earth, uh, you know, what observations we have about the, the sun and the moon. And, and then from there we s start be beginning to talk about um, how the planets came to be, um, what sort of uh, organization there was in the early solar system that separated the planets from the, s from the sun itself, um, what they're comprised of, why they're comprised of, what they're comprised of, um, and then taking a look at you know, what stars are comprised of and what causes them to have their structure. Uh, so we start small, um, then we uh, just continue to expand. So we go from planets to stars to 
uh, clusters of stars or galaxies, and then we start talking about the existence of the universe itself. Um, and so we would close the uh, close the semester with a discussion on cosmology, um, the existence of space, the existence of time, the existence of matter, um, and throughout how it is that we know what we know, how is it that we can look out into the night sky and know the entire structure of the universe just by looking at the movement of the stars and planets through those observations night after night. Uh, how do scientists know what we know about everything? And that's astronomy. So AP Physics is a full year course open to juniors entering their senior year. It is a course that can only be taken after a first year physics course. So um, regardless of the physics course you took your junior year, um, you're eligible to take AP Physics. Um, though AP Physics does require some upper level problem solving, so you have to be very comfortable with your math skills um, in order to be able to take the course uh, and succeed probably to a degree that you'd like. Um, the AP Physics course is a full year course. It actually comprises two separate AP Physics exams. Uh, the fall semester um, from September until December is AP Mechanics, and so that's covering topics like forces and energy and momentum circular motion stuff that's probably pretty familiar to students who have already taken a physics course. The second half of the year though is electricity and magnetism. That's a separate AP course, so you can actually take two tests at the end of the year and get credit for two college classes. The electricity and magnetism course is all new material covering things like static electricity, current electricity, electromagnetism. Um, so it'll be new stuff, but um, should be pretty interesting. Uh, as I said, it counts as two separate AP courses. Um, it should be taken concurrently with AP Calculus because it is a calculus-based course. Um, so it's something worth considering. Uh, but I encourage anyone who enjoyed their first year physics course to, uh, to sign up for AP Physics C, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next year. Hi, I'm Mrs. Tracy. Um, I am the current Honors Chemistry and AP Chemistry teacher here at Avonworth High School. The elective course that I teach is AP Chemistry. AP Chemistry is the type of course that would benefit any student who has an interest in pursuing additional chemistry beyond Honors Chemistry 1. Most of my students are in the 11th and 12th grade and they've committed themselves to a course that's college level. Um, it is a curriculum that's designed and has been approved by a professor at the college level. The class meets two periods a day for a total of 10 periods a week that incorporates lab and time to work on problems. Our main goal is to make sure that the student who takes the course is ready to take an AP exam, covering the material um, in May of the following um, semester, so May of the spring semester. Um, the course is one credit. Um, usually the best student who would be eligible to take it would be somebody who has completed um, at a successful level honors chemistry one and is currently enrolled in either IM4 or calculus. If you have any questions, please come and see me at your convenience. Thanks. We love AP Chem! If you're interested in biology, Pennsylvania's environment, our solar system, or the human body, you should consider taking one of these science electives. You can sign up on March 15th.